Welcome back to the Field of 68 After Dark. We are live on YouTube. We are live on Twitter. We are live on SiriusXM Channel 84. That is the ESPNU station. My name is Rob Doster. I have Terrence Oglesby here. I have Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman here. And we need to talk about the craziest team in college basketball. And I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's hyperbole. No. Alabama, in the same week, lost to Georgia and beat Baylor. T.O., what? is going on with this team they just locked in it, it seems to me just mental guys like are they guarding against georgia like they guarded today because today they were swarming to the basketball gosh they were fast and it, it i think this doesn't say so much about baylor as much as it does say about alabama because we know their guards have been this good we've known that it's just the lack of focus at points during the season that just kind of drive you crazy but defensively today i think they showed a lot more uh just tenacity i think that's the biggest thing like they're playing in georgia at georgia probably nobody there like it it is what it is like it's it's tough but today they were swarming to the basketball and get this first official sellout of alabama season wow. first official yeah. sellout of alabama season that's nuts with some of the games that they've had at their place yeah it's i mean it was loud there and i just want to kind of go through some of these crazy wins and crazy losses that they have right so they lost to iona and rick patino early on this season uh, they got whooped by Memphis, a bad Memphis team. Uh, they lost to Georgia on the road. They lost to Missouri on the road. They also have beaten Baylor. They also have beaten Houston. And they also have beaten Gonzaga. So I don't know, Jeff, if you, when I say that they're Jekyll and Hyde, nobody plays to the level of competition more than this Alabama team does. Is that when you look forward, towards the NCAA tournament, does this make you feel confident in them? Or are you like, yeah, I'm picking them to be an upset first round? Lock it. I, I talked to Nate Oates last night, and, and I asked him that. I'm like, I'm like, what is going on with your team? And he's like, honestly, like, I, I can't even explain it. You know, they brought in people to talk to these kids, and I, I still think it comes down to Quinterly. If Quinterly has that, that, that kind of energy to him and that swagger to his game – I think everybody feeds off him. You know, he's kind of that guy. And again, they do. They, they, they definitely get up for the big games. There's no doubt about that. But how can you lose to, to Georgia, who is the worst, <laughs> I, I think, the worst power five team? Here it comes. No, but they stink. <laughs> they stink. And then beat Baylor and Gonzaga. Gonzaga in Seattle on the road. But again, it comes down to Quinterly and J.D. Davison. And those guys were fantastic today. They, they combined for 34, but more importantly, or as, as importantly, they made shots from the perimeter. And if they can do that, and like Tio said, I think at the beginning, if they come out and defend and are just absolutely junkyard dogs getting after it, they are a tough team to beat. But it, it, they're a tough team to beat as long as Quinterly and or J.D. Davidson play well. I mean, it's always going to be the defensive end with Alabama. We've How, how often have we talked about this, Theo? You, you don't replace Herb Jones. You just It's no. not possible to do. John Petty, elite defender. They went from being a team that had all that size and athleticism on their perimeter to being a team that has a bunch of smaller, uh, smaller guards, smaller perimeter guys. But I do want to ask you about Baylor because Baylor's now lost three games. They, they spent the first two months of the season uh, looking like they were going to repeat. And they've looked very beatable recently is there a flaw with this group is this just uh the natural kind of uh way that teams grow throughout a season what's what's your take on this Baylor group I, I, Akinjo hasn't been a Kenjo that we saw at the beginning of the year I think that's part of it he was he's hurt. At, yeah he's, he's hurt, hurt. I, yeah, that's he's huge hurt. obviously head of the snake is significant for them because he creates that chain of events for them offensively but another thing too is if you notice the lineups and uh was it Jimmy? Dott? He, he talked about it during the game. The lineups for Baylor, like they took Jam Wachachua out, Flo Thamba out. Alabama enforced their way of style of play onto Baylor to where they had to adjust and play lineups that they haven't played all that much. They've usually had one five man in there that can really guard, but they're so fast, Alabama is. I, this is a tough game on the road for a Baylor team that's coming back with their most one of their most important players with an ankle injury. So I think it says a little bit about both, but Alabama's atmosphere tonight was, was pretty good. And they just imposed their will with their speed. Yeah. Kendra wasn't the only guy that was banged up. LJ Cryer did not play. Yeah. And Jeremy Soshan was, uh, he, so I mean, he's, 
so Han, he's been he's been dealing with it. Don't even bother. I just don't, I'm gonna I, you try. Know, you know I want to help gonna get you. Right. I want you know, my you know goal gonna get it right. is to help you with your pronunciations this year. That's my goal. Uh, <laughs> Sohan, Sohan. But but listen, the the other thing is Matthew Meyer yep. needs to be more consistent. He yes. does. We 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 expected so much from him this year and the maturity, and he worked in the offseason to get his body better and get his mind right. And some days you look at him and you're like, oh my goodness. And then other days you look at him and you're like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, he's playing a different role this year. Right. Like he's, he's trying to be more assertive. He's taking the ball and looking for his offense right away. Last year, he let everything come to him. And it's like, it came easier for him. He's attacking off catches last year, this year, he'll get a de he'll get a defensive rebound take off and look for his own offense, which is, which was uncharacteristic from last season, right? So he's trying to be the man. He doesn't know how to be the man. If he would just keep doing what he was doing, his usage rate's going to go up anyway because he's playing more minutes, right? So he's just being a different player than he, that. what made him so good last season.